Well, good morning and welcome back to Finnair, for the third time in several months. I thought it was worthwhile showing you Helsinki's recently refurbished airport terminal, as Finavia has done a great job, in my opinion. And hopefully, sites like this are now a thing of the past. Well, good afternoon everybody, and welcome to Finnair's Airbus A350 from here in Helsinki back to Heathrow. So, just to give you a quick update, I've just spent a couple of days over in Estonia, which I'd highly recommend, and sailed back on the Tallink, uh, one of the two ferries they've got operating the route at the moment, and it's a nice alternative to flying. So, today I am in Helsinki Airport, and I am in the business lounge. So, uh, Finnair has two lounges here. Um, this one is the business lounge. They also have what they call the platinum wing, which is their equivalent of the first class lounges. So you can get in there if you're traveling with One World Emerald status. Unfortunately, it's closed. It's been closed for a few months now. So just as the world started to deal with the last couple of years and things were starting to pick up of course the situation then happened in Russia and so a lot of Finnair's flights, uh, long haul flights, fly from here to the far east because it's a really convenient connection. So as we saw in the last video Finnair has a really popular regional subsidiary so from here to the UK they operate to Manchester to Edinburgh with the regional subsidiary on the Embraer regional jets. But then down to Heathrow as I say this afternoon they also fly the Airbus A350 on one of their rotations per day. So quite looking forward to that. I'm hoping that it'll have the new interior, but we'll see. But if not, looking forward to really good food and also really good service on board. And of course, it's a long haul airliner, so we'll get the flatbed for a two and a half hour flight. It's a nice little novelty, I suppose. So I'm just gonna have something to eat now, have a drink. Uh, if you wanna see this lounge with the cocktails and bits and pieces, then refer to my previous video. Uh, on Finnair. I'll not spend too much time on the lounge here because I've previewed it a few times on other videos. So I'll see you on board. Today's flight at 2 hours and 34 minutes on a wide body Airbus A350 and we'll be cruising at a maximum altitude of 43,000 feet today. It's a cold April day here in Helsinki and we're in a fair old queue to be de-iced. Some 50 minutes later, we taxi out to a very snowy takeoff. from Helsinki to London on what is a two and a half hour flight something like that and yeah I've got a full flatbed business class seat on a sparkly Airbus A350 why is that well the truth is I honestly don't know and I will try and find out before I produce the video 
sort of, if you've seen my previous videos, Iberia and BA fly the wide body, the 777s, the A330 between Heathrow and Madrid. Well, that's for cargo reasons. And maybe it's the same on this route. I honestly don't know. But if you want to try it out, and I do like the Airbus A350, then Finnair flies this to Heathrow once a day. Otherwise, it's like an A321 like I flew up with the other day. And you've seen the Airbus 321 with Finnair on previous videos, of course. But there is something a bit extra special about flying wide bodies, isn't there? They're just so much nicer. And this seat is very nice. It's not the most luxurious business class seat in the world. And the only reason I say that is because, regardless of the type of seat, my own preference is to fly forwards. So this is angled to the window. And it's you can see out the window, it's not like last time I flew Virgin Atlantic, and I, I don't fly Virgin Atlantic very often, but last time I flew with them, the seats were faced inwards in business class, which kind of defeats the object of having a window, doesn't it, really? I always thought that was a bit weird. But uh, these seats do face the windows, uh, which is good, which is nice. It's comfortable, it's very nice. Not as much privacy as you get on the more modern, like the BA Club Suite, you know, type of seat. Uh, but nevertheless, still nice enough. The one thing I did notice, and here's a little tip for you. So I'm flying in 2L, which is on the right-hand seat, the second seat back in the forward cabin. There's, there's a mini business class cabin behind this as well. But if you notice, in row 1, there's only one window. And I seem to recall that from when I flew on the British Airways A350 a while ago. Whereas in my seat here, we have two windows. So there you go. Just an observation. So let me show you around. So if we get the monitor out, we press this button here, I think. See, that's quite good, isn't it? So the monitor just doesn't throw itself at you. It just gently moves into position. So I think you can control it from here. You must be able to, surely you can. But I'm just going to try and I'm just going to reach out to be honest. I prefer doing that myself. So see how responsive it is. It seems quite responsive, doesn't it? So we've got, oh, we've got flight cameras. I forgot, yes, we get flight cameras on this aircraft, don't we? Oh, wow. <laughs> Not sure I want to see that. Look at the hot towel. Very, very posh. And it's not see-through like you sometimes get on British Airways. Because on British Airways they're so worn out. You can sometimes actually see your face through them. You can't see my face, look, see? Quality. So on this flight, we get handed these little uh, earphones to plug in for the sound on the movies. I presume, although I'm not sure, but I presume on the longer flights, on the proper long-haul flights, you get proper headphones. And you see the challenge with this system, right? And it's a very much a first world problem for me, of course, is that I got some of these Apple AirPods Max things, which are really good, I really like them. But traditionally I've always used Bose type equipment. Now the Bose came with an airline adapter. Because these are completely wireless, it's of course the old uh, Apple ethos is to make everything as wireless as possible. You can't plug them in. So it means you are tied to using these things, which I'm not even going to try. So it's only a short flight. Don't fancy watching a movie today. Now I've actually stuffed the microphone into my mask, so if this doesn't work right, apologies, but I'm having to make do as best I can while we still have these masks. So let's see, I mean, generally speaking, this system is extremely responsive. Shall we have a look at the movies? See what's uh, available. Let's go to menu, movies. Wow, that is really impressive. Look how fast it moves. No Time to Die, excellent film, really enjoyed it. Although, not sure how they're going to bring James Bond back now, but hopefully I've not spoiled that for anybody. Yeah, so uh, that interesting fact I was going to tell you, well, it's not so interesting, but... So if you've seen my previous videos, I keep saying that, I assume that most of you have. You can learn a lot about me by watching my previous videos, right? What motivates me, what, why I love flying so much. But, I was flying back on Lufthansa many years ago, probably about 15 years ago from Dubai, in first class. And I'd just redeemed some 
what was then BMI, British Midland, when that airline was around, for those of you who remember. So I was really bought into Star Alliance. And the first ever gold stasis with was with BMI, or simply British Midland as it was known. But they, of course, being a Star Alliance partner, it meant you could redeem with Air Canada and Lufthansa. So I fancied to go on the Lufthansa 747 in first class. Uh, so I redeemed my miles. So I was flying back fairly late in the evening. At that time, the Dubai to Frankfurt flight left at quarter to two in the morning, so it's a gruelling time to fly, even in first class, let me tell you, if you've never done it. But nevertheless, I really enjoyed it. But I discovered, and you'll have seen this on my previous videos because I listen to him quite a lot, uh, and I've seen him live several times, is uh, the electronic artist Paul Van Dyke. And just by chance, just by chance, and he's my favourite artist of all time, just by chance, I put Paul Van Dyke on the music on the entertainment system flying back from Dubai. So there you go. Interesting fact of the day. If you're Alan Partridge, I guess. And uh, let me show you the sunshine because it's a lovely day now. You can just see we at the moment are, hopefully the camera's focused, we are just east of Stockholm in Sweden. Uh, despite the fact we took off about 40 minutes late, that was purely just because we were waiting for the uh, de-icing to become available. As I always say on these videos, it's always sunny above the cloud. Uh, so we get in this particular seat configuration, this fairly small table, it must... Honestly, I've tried to fold it out to make it a little bit bigger. I'm trying to give you some context here just to show you how small it actually is. And I can't pull it any closer to me. So it must just be how it's been designed. Seems awfully small for, presumably, if you're flying long haul. What you would expect, you would get a fairly substantial meal. So the question is, where are you going to put it all? Because as you can see, I've put all of my rubbish on the side there. Oh well. I mean, I'll survive today, of course, but it'll be fine. And so uh, lunch service has just arrived, and I'm pleased to say it's one of my favourite combinations. I absolutely love seafood. So we've got a couple of prawns to start, and a curry as the main course. Not quite sure what the green stuff is, but I'll let you know how it tastes. So far, so good. I have absolutely no idea what that green stuff is, but it's very tasty. It's got a very, I mean, it's a curry taste, I guess. It's very spicy. Quite a mild, spicy taste. I'll have to find out what it is. It does taste nice, actually. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, absolutely fabulous. I love that meal really good. I guess you've got to like gurus. But, um, the man sat across from me, I'll have to whisper this right because I don't want to hear here, but the man sat across from me clearly doesn't like gurus because he's left half of his. And I could have eaten a bit more, so I nearly said, can I have yours? <laughs> but then I thought, that's going to sound weird, isn't it, right? If somebody you've never met before asks you for your lunch. <laughs> so, I didn't. But, nevertheless. It's just sat there looking at me, his curry. Would you have asked for it? Let me know in the comments. Have you ever asked for somebody else's lunch? And what was the response? That's what I want to know. So we're just cruising at 43,000 feet now, so quite a high altitude, higher than it usually flies, but it's a nice smooth flight, and actually despite the fact it was snowing in uh, Finland when we departed, it's actually turned out to be a fairly sunny day now, as I said, the sun shines above the clouds. So, I thought I'd just bring you up to date with a couple of things that have been pointed out to me lately on the channel, and uh, it's all good. But before I do that, there's just time to tell you about my awesome Patreon supporters. 
such as James, Joe, Kieran and Joshua, who enable me to bring you these videos month in, month out. This month, we give a very warm welcome to new supporter, Connor Sampson. So welcome Connor, and thanks for your support. As a long-term follower, Neil Turner pointed out to me the other day, as I quite often say at the end of the video, and in my next video will feature X, Y or Z. And that's not always the case. Uh, sometimes I move the orders of the videos around a bit. It's not deliberate, it's just sometimes uh, airline reviews fall into your lap. And for anybody who does any form of review, whether it's airlines, boats or anything really, sometimes companies just are unexpected. So sometimes you'll get a really good flight, like today's flight on Finnair. Sometimes you'll pay a lot of money for a flight that turns out to be actually pretty rubbish and I like to do comparisons so one of the things you'll be familiar with again if you've seen my videos and you've followed me for a while is I love flying to the Canary Islands and it's one of my favourite regions favourite places to go on earth and so I go probably once or twice a month at the moment down to the Canaries and there are a whole host of airlines that fly down there and you'll see that on the video when I go into it so I recently covered Ryanair, I've recently done Jet 2, which is also on the channel, and upcoming is TUI, which wasn't so good, and you'll see that, I think I'm going to launch that, uh, you'll probably, actually, you'll have seen that by the time this video goes live, but the truth is, sometimes, it just falls, it just, sometimes it just feels right to launch a certain video at a certain point, and particularly the Canary Islands series, uh, have fallen quite lucky. Uh, or not, as you'll see, or as you will have seen with the TUI video. And sometimes it's quite surprising, the experience you get. So whereas, a good example is I meant to do the TUI video first, it, because it's been recorded and actually edited for probably six weeks now. Uh, but I had such a bad experience with them, because it was the most expensive way I've ever had of getting to the Canaries. So I didn't want to be accused of being too negative, because the comments, sometimes you can get that. So I wanted to launch the Ryanair and the Jet 2 videos first to prove that actually where you get a good flight, credit where credit's due, I'll say that. But where I get a bad flight, as much as I always try to put a positive spin on everything in terms of flying and aviation, because I love it so much, sometimes you just have to call it out. And that two-way flight was particularly bad, and by now you've probably seen it. And by now, to be fair, I'll be honest, I'll have probably lost a few subscribers because you do tend to find that when you launch a negative video but the reality is I'm not too worried about that now, um, purely because it's about bringing videos that can help you in your choice of airlines or ferry companies or hotels or whatever it is I do. So I make no apologies for being honest. Where should we go next? Do you want to do some toilet cam next? Let's do that. So, here is Fully Flat Neil, and I'll not trademark that because it sounds rubbish, doesn't it? Fully Flat Neil. Sounds a bit weird, actually. <laughs> so, um, I am fully flat. I am just over six feet tall, and I have to say it's not bad. It's not perfect, though. My feet are... I'll try and get my feet. Look how cramped my feet are in this little cubby hole here. So they're all squished together. I mean, I do sleep very well at night, don't get me wrong, so I could sleep on here, but um, I mean, with shoulder, shoulder width, it's fine. Shoulder width, it's absolutely fine, but um, I don't know, it's just, this is why you should fly forwards, because I don't think they've got this problem on the forward-facing seats. I can't remember, actually, to be honest. That's 
a while since I've flown my model because of everything that's happened, but my feet really aren't comfortable, I have to say. But I must say what I do like, what I do find really comfortable in this configuration is if I've got my feet on the upper level, so there's like two levels, uh, but up here it's not too bad. And I've got the seat just tilted back slightly with the armrest up. And the armrest does go down, but uh, I've just got the back up like that, just sort of like, just sort of angled. And this is nice actually, this is a nice seating position just if I was watching a film. So on a day flight, actually this is nice, I quite like this. It's just so narrow at the feet level. Uh, so if you take the meal service this afternoon, um, we had a drink service, then the meal, then coffee, then another bar service, and then they cleared everything away. The last three flights I've been on with Finair, it has gone like clockwork, exactly the same process. Drinks, lunch, coffee, drinks, clear away. And as a creature of habit, and I've said this before, I love that. I absolutely love that, because you know what you're going to get. So as we start descending into Heathrow on what has been an excellent Finnair flight, all that's left to say is thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye for now.